Um, there we go, starting the recording now. So welcome to the um, Algo Dynamic Postcard series, uh, podcast series, and we're going to have a chat every month with all the, the major people in finance or all the major gurus. So very pleased to to wel welcome Ernie. So I will give an introduction in a second. So um, form format for today is, as I said, the, um, the first half will be recorded. So we are recording now. Uh, the second half is your show. So we have some amazing people in the, in the audience. So just raise your hand. Uh, don't be shy towards the second part of the show and then, you know, ask your questions. I think Ernie's extremely knowledgeable. So this is definitely your chance to ask him, actually. And then uh, second part will not be recorded. Once again, the second part will not be recorded. So thank you for that. So um, Ernie, do, do you need much of an introduction or shall I introduce you? What, what What's the best format here, Ernie? <laughs> No, no, let's uh, get right on to the uh, the questions. <laughs> right on to the questions. Okay, I've got, yeah. some, I've got some meaty questions. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Um, Ernie, I'll start with the beginning. Um, dare I say, like, like like a lot of quants, you're starting out. So um, physical sciences, PhD, is, is, is that correct? I, I didn't find your exact thesis, but do you remember vaguely what was your what was your dissertation back, back in the days? Oh, it's um, it's on a, a very arcane topic in the theoretical condensed metaphysics. So, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's called ordering by disorder. Uh, it's Order. called yeah, this is in the quantum anti-ferromagnetic. So, it's very arcane. <laughs> I, I like it. No, it's okay. F physics, quantum, it's okay. It's okay. Only I, I think we, we're all guilty. It's okay. I've, I've yeah. vaguely got one of those two actually. So yes, <laughs> don't want to talk about it. Okay, well done. Okay. Yeah. So. I'm assuming, and then dare I say, the usual format. So tried a bit of academia, didn't quite work out. Big banks, Ernie, is that, is that what happened? Yeah, give or take? No, no. Actually, I have determined uh, from the first two weeks of arriving at my PhD program that I'm, uh, you know, no match for, uh, uh, you know, 25% of all, all physicists. So I, 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 I've uh, decided to look for something else to do right uh, right from the beginning. And, and fortunately, I, I've developed a keen interest in uh, machine learning, although I oh, didn't yeah. take any courses in that and uh, nor did any research p uh, by myself on that. Um, I you know, managed to uh, somehow get a, a job at uh, IBM research doing machine learning. Uh, you know, they were quite uh, generous in, in hiring someone who have absolutely zero knowledge in machine learning to do one of the most important project uh, in machine learning. Uh, at uh, at the human language technologies group, so I was quite uh, surprised that uh, wow. I managed to switch career quite uh, quite abruptly at that point. Congratulations, congratulations! But it, it's fair to say, I mean, machine learning's been around forever, so to speak. But you know, back then it was it was not not as exciting, I would say. What was the state of machine learning back then in terms of you know know how and popularity? Because there was definitely no machine learning courses, were there? I think. Well, there were actually there were uh, some machine learning courses, but you know at that time I think that um, uh, you know we there there there's of course uh, you know people have been researching neural network yeah for yeah. some time, but I think when I uh, was in the PhD program it was in what is called an AI winter, yeah. where they did not find that it really produced uh, sufficient performance. And now we know why. One reason is there's not enough data. Secondly, there's not enough computational power. So as you know, deep learning requires tremendous amount of data and tremendous amount of computational power, neither of which were available at the time. So quite apart from um, you know the, the 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 algorithm not being as good as it is now, but just the input and the yeah. infrastructure was not sufficient to bring it up to speed. But at that time already, we have um, the uh, algorithms for uh, tree-based algorithm and uh, also for um, other uh, single value decomposition, so, 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 all, all, kind, uh, all kinds of um, support factor machines, I'm sorry, not single factor, uh, support factor machines. And, you know, so we have a lot of the basic algorithm that we use today, except that, uh, again, these are, you know, really the limitation is data and computational power. Yeah. Okay. Data computational power, which, which yeah, absolutely. I think we, we've cracked that one now. So th <laughs> thank you, Amazon. I guess isn't it? And and, and thank yeah. you, Microsoft. So that's on that one. So <laughs> three based stuff actually. So so IBM. So um AI. So I'm assuming use cases at IBM would have been speech recognition. Only is that is that, is that the obvious one? What was IBM thinking? Yes. Yeah. So yes, at uh you know IBM at that time was one of the top two labs in uh, speech recognition. The other yeah. one is the Bell Labs, and then we also do other language related. Topics such as machine translation, natural language understanding, 
uh, and uh, web search technology. So I was oh, actually okay. the IBM web search technology uh, at that time, the, the research side of it. And uh, but you know, it's funny enough, um, some of the members of IBM become much more well known as uh, head fund managers than uh, you're than about to. I'm about that. to say actually because the the unofficial spin, uh, the the New York hedge fund. Which one was it, um, Ernie? They, they they left IBM, didn't they? Um, was it Millennium? No, who was it? No, it's the uh, Renaissance technology. Renaissance, yeah, yes. Okay, sorry, right. sorry, yeah, Renaissance. Okay, yeah. okay. So, Ernie, is, it, is that sort of what happened? You, you saw Renaissance and you had some ideas, or what, what, what was the next one, actually? This is fascinating. Yeah, we, you know, why I was at IBM, half of the group uh, departed to for Rentec. So, you know, yeah. Rentec even, uh, you know, basically they ran Rentec um, <laughs> since, since they left. So, this has become a subsidiary of, uh, you know, IBM research <laughs> in some sense. But um, uh, so I also got curious and, um, uh, and at that time, uh, Morgan Stanley just started up their AI labs. Okay. Uh, it was the early days. So I joined as an employee number five or six at Morgan Stanley in the AI lab. And that's when I really become, became formally introduced to, to finance. Yeah, okay. Because before that, it was more on the speech on the web, actually. So Morgan Stanley. So I, I'm assuming, so back then, was it historical mining? Was it sentiment? What, what was Morgan Stanley trying to do, Ernie? This, this is interesting, this historical thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the group was founded mainly to develop trading strategies based yeah. on AI. So quite frankly, <laughs> it, there's, there's only one goal. And it was uh, uh, kind of a co-founded by the head of U.S. equity at that time. His name is yeah. uh, Kevin Parker. Um, and then uh, also by a professor at NYU called uh, Fasan Ta. And he's still a professor there. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the two uh, started this group with the uh, objective of developing trading strategy for Kevin. And uh, and then, you know, they were doing pretty well, I heard, uh, you know, before I joined. And then suddenly, well, after I joined, and it just seems to be a pattern in, in my career, is that after I joined, uh, Kevin uh, decided to find a different job. He became the global head of equity at Deutsche Bank. And uh, so the group was suddenly without sponsor. And then Fasan uh, decided not to get involved because Kevin's gone. So um, uh, suddenly, my direct manager, um, and a guy by the name of uh, Madafan uh, become in charge, and Madafan has a somewhat different um, uh, has you know take on 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 the direction where the group was going. Uh, he wanted to branch out into serving multiple business unit uh, of all kinds of stuff besides uh, trading strategies. They want to serve marketing. They want to serve investment banking. They want to serve um, you know mining the um, customer relationship data and all kinds of stuff. So we were just basically pitching to the internal business unit at Morgan Stanley, anyone who would uh, listen. Uh, and meantime, uh, one faction in the group decided, oh, I don't want to do all that uh, stuff. I just want to trade. And so all of a sudden, half the group split and went over to Credit Suisse and asked me to join them. I said, OK, well, that's interesting. So <laughs> let's join the, let's join the, this rabble group and at the Credit Suisse, and they started up a pop trading group, uh, again, using machine learning to trade at the Credit Suisse. So I just suddenly landed in Credit Suisse after half a year, won't say anything. So every time I join a big company, there's always half the group departed for some other I firm. Can, I can see a pattern there, Ernie. Is there something you want to tell us or not, sir? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, join the group. So, and then, dare I say, I think, you know, slightly fast forwarding, so Credit Suisse, same thing, trading strategies, dare I say, pretty, pretty vanilla Ernie what, what, what was the sort of there was probably more freedom back then I, I guess you know prop trading prop capital was 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 more easy to, to come by is that, is that a fair statement or it is uh, yes it's, yeah. you know we, we don't answer to it so they're a bit, bit more patient right it's a, because it's internal capital uh, we were given uh, some time to develop the, the technology and the, and then start to trading um, but there's a lot of politics going on as, as uh, you know with uh, <laughs> uh with the um head of u.s equity and you know at that time the um the head of uh, uh credit suisse equity desk is uh Bailey dugan and he later on became the ceo of uh, credit suisse um uh, and uh but anyway there was a lot of uh, politics so um after two years i decided that uh well it didn't work out the, the, the group so we we all went our own way and i i i uh uh, went about starting a, a startup, which is actually very similar to later on Quanto Quantobian. I don't know if any one of you know know about Quantobian, but actually the idea was almost the same, uh, except that I didn't raise their uh, 
35 million of venture capitals. <laughs> uh, so you, you're being sensible, were you? You, you? you had a proper business plan, Ernie, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so, I, uh, you know, didn't, uh, you know, and then, and then by the time we launched the product, all of a sudden, you, we have a, uh, you know, I, it's quite amazing. I we had the first um, you know product launch, and then we were uh, going to invite uh, some broker uh, to yeah. to to uh, take a look at our product. And uh, I just sent out a, a invitation on in the morning of September 11, 2001, and we didn't get a reply uh, from these uh, brokers uh, in New York. So uh, you know, basically, it didn't go anywhere after that. Uh, it was uh, kind of a deep freeze in 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 the uh, interest in in trying out new things, and then um, no, I went back to work with a hedge fund uh, in 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 Toronto. So uh, so I you know gave up this uh, uh, startup, and I you know resumed my uh, research career at a hedge fund in Toronto, and then later on Millennium Partners in New York, and. Um, and then a number of other ones until I decided that uh, you know I think I still work best as a entrepreneur more than interesting you know as a researcher in a group. So I I went back to Canada in two thousand six to um, start um, pop trading for myself and also start writing books and blogs and so forth. And I never stopped doing that. Uh, so in, in in the meantime, I um i started hedge fund qts again had 11 12 years of track record did very well uh and still going although i don't run it anymore we had a nice we have a nice uh, ceo that mm. took over that um and uh, it's, you know going going well and uh and then we uh i returned my focus to applying machine learning to asset management that's why in 2020 i started uh a, a new startup called predictnow.ai which which essentially is commercializing the AI technology that we have found to work so well in our hedge fund and, uh, you know, to, to, to launch it for other managers to use. Brilliant, brilliant, actually. Okay, so that's okay. Love, I mean, amazing trajectory, by the way. It, it's and I, maybe it's dare I say, Ernie, this this one's going well. You know, the the, the team hasn't split suddenly, has it? I, I think you you you've broken out of that sort of spell, so to speak. So, bit bit more on the technical side. So, you know, starting off, you know, early days, IBM, all the way through to to predict now. Is is it literally a question that there's more data and there's more comp um, compute? Only w w what are the differences as, as as you've gone through the decades in in terms of the you know both the types of machine learnings, and and the outcomes? Well, yes, I think that um, one thing we learn is that, um, and not just we, but you know, pretty much the majority of people in applying for machine learning to asset management find out is that it is um, uh, you know really as hard as building a self-driving car if not harder and actually i've listened to a pod uh, a podcast by two uh, two guys who came out of Goldman Sachs that said well you know i uh, one of the guys said well i i was involved in ai in self-driving car before i went to join the finance industry and he can testify that finance is harder uh, in terms of making ai to work uh, and uh, you know self-driving cars you look, look around you know it's not a resounding success yet um, you know, you. <laughs> in fact, I heard that the GM cruise division was shut down in San Francisco. It's a tremendous flop, if, as far as I can tell. And um, you know, Tesla just got a recall, and you know, just not. It's not working. Okay, just be quite quite simply, not working. So, and uh, if it's not working in a self driving car, uh, in as I mentioned, it's doubly not working. To be quite frank, it's not at all working uh, in the way that people had envisioned. Uh, starting in my days in. Um, more insane. But what has worked, again, if you draw the parallel with the um, automobile industry, what has worked very well is assisted driving technology, yes, right? So yes, you yes. basically cannot find a car, new car these days that doesn't keep you in the lane, wake you up when you're nodding off, uh, collision, you know, avoidance, it's just all kinds of bells and whistles. You just can't really, can't really die in a car unless you want to, right? It's, that's that's how good the assisted driving. And similarly, in in asset management, we have the same phenomenon. So we don't want the machine to take over our job. I mean, in machine, unless it's directly programmed by our rules, that's different. But we don't want a machine to make decisions that we don't understand mm. uh, because usually they don't work. <laughs> it's quite frankly, and uh, or it worked for one year and then that next year had a fifty percent drawdown. That has been yeah. the case. And what we want is machine learning that keep us in the lane and keep remove the risk and optimize different decisions. Optimize is the 
keyword. We don't want it to take our decisions away from us, but it, we want it to optimize our decisions, optimize our, in particular, asset allocation, reduce the risk. And those are the jobs that machine learning did very well, just as it did very well in automobiles. It's that assisted, is, yeah. I, I think I think I can we can see the pattern, but that's but that's yeah. I guess that's everywhere, isn't it? Um, Gary, I think the uh, chess player Gary Gary Kasparov made the point about you know good, d decent machine, decent human. I, I, I think that's the best outcome, isn't it, Ernie? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what you're saying. So I think yeah, that's, that, that, that that's that's right. Yes, that's yes. another one. So good, good on that one, really. So so I, I guess it, that, that's that's what you've condensed in predict now, isn't it, Ernie? I, I think it, it's combination. It's an augmentation of of, of humans and strategies. Is, is that a one yeah, that's right. That's right. You know what we call corrective AI in one yeah. of the products. Basically, um, you know, we don't want AI to make decisions, but we want AI to correct the human decisions, uh, improve it. And the other product called CPO is like a conditional portfolio optimization. It, it it wants it to optimize the portfolio capital allocation better than the traditional method. You know, the goal sounds very modest, but these are goals that are achievable. We are not trying to build a artificial general intelligence for trading. Oh, I don't think we are there yet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's <laughs> well, if, if you listen to so, some marketing people, you, you think these large language models can do everything, right, Ernie? But that's right. That's right. Just... Yes. I mean, I, I actually am working on a new book that uh, look at how generative AI can help as a manager. And I, as I was sharing on X.com, you know, I used to call it Twitter. Twitter, yeah. yeah. We should use X. And, um, and uh, you know, I'd say, well, you know, we achieved some um, adjusted closing price for us for SPY, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, basic question, right? And uh, you know, it took me two days to to to, to teach it. You know, it's just <laughs> it's just incredible, right? It was an artificial general intelligence. You can't even retrieve a few prizes for me. And uh, so I've coached it for two days before I finally know how to do it. So uh, you can see that you know AI is not quite there if it wants to, you know. Do things that are uh, not, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, with great guidance. Uh, you definitely cannot let it run wild by itself. Oh God! With, with, with a slight, a, a slight credit to these large language models, Ernie, I, I think that they're, they're optimized to sound good. They're not optimized to be correct, are they? <laughs> yes. That's... No, I, 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 I drew analogies. You know, it's a, the analogy I use in my new book is that. Uh, you know, you, you, it's like training a, a smart college intern, right? You know, some 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 smart intern. You yeah. know, they are, they can be very smart, but they don't have any experience. They have no context whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. So you you should not uh, uh, expect that. Hey, get uh, you know, you, you you guys lock yourself in a room and 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 then research a training strategy with a sharp or two point five and, until you come out. Don't don't come out until you get me strategy uh, with a sharp to two point five or higher. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. You have to be intensive coaching. I, and I find, you know, in real life, the best way to get value out of inexperienced but smart people, such as interns, is that you have to supervise them closely. You have to work with them daily. And then if they are any smart, they, they will generate something good. And that is the same approach you have to take with this large language model. Yeah, yeah. Let it or, you know, tell it to do something without coaching them does not work. No, okay. Point point taken. Good feedback then for our, our friends developing LMM models, actually. But I think, you know, regardless of that, I think, you no. Know, I mean, you know, from our end, only, you know, we're using them for marketing, <laughs> these LMM models. They, they, they make everything sound great, by the way. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think other use cases, you know, and once again, you know, to their credit, you know, it, it's not what they were designed for. They, they were not designed to sort of come up with, you know, sharp 2.1 trading strategies, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. No, you know, but there's all this talk about artificial general intelligence. Like, you wow. know, they say, "Wow, you know, we this finally can pass a math exam of a grade three student." I say, "Wow, if that's considered artificial general intelligence, you, you are certainly setting the bar low uh, here." But uh, you know, I thought mathematics can solve all math problems already, like 35 years ago. So, uh, but anyway, these 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 people like hype. You know, the more hype wow. they they have, the the uh, <laughs> Bigger the pay package, right? You know, everybody like hype. You know, who who doesn't? So um, I, I, it's okay with me. I, I understand hype. I've seen lots of hype from. You, yeah, you know, you've, you've seen the dot com. You've seen them all, I guess, haven't you? Yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen I've seen hype since nineteen ninety nine. So yeah. um, so no problem. Yes. <laughs> Once again, playing devil's advocate, and, and thank you, Ernie. It's always incredibly yeah. interesting. 
my, my view at listen.com obviously overhyped um you know shorter term it was overhyped i think longer term we've probably underestimated it you know the, the the powers of amazon and apple basically which is all essentially internet technology um, oh that's uh, right yes yeah. yes yeah so, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll no 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 question that um, you know the huge amount of capital invested uh, you know yeah. may not benefit the the specific uh, companies that uh, you know receive them but you know overall it has a you know certainly positive uh, impact on the industry on 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 the economy yeah but you know it, it's the when though isn't it? It, it it it's a question of timing too you know when we get to see it when we get to benefit it and that's right that's right there's a few undesirable you know events along the way be it september 11th or global financial crisis you know these, these mm-hmm. things happen right so there we go so fascinating 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 okay um I, I'm, I'm going to slowly mute myself actually and i, I said I, I think we have some so we have some amazing audience members or audience people so, so i think I'll, I'll get them on stage in a second so um j- just practical terms actually um i'll i'll invite um jimmy on stage soon actually and then tarun will give a bit, a bit of context so um We've been doing stuff with Ernie for a while now. So, you know, us as Algodynamics and then uh, Ernie with his um, Predict Now hat on. Um, we, we don't have any major announcements yet, but we, we've been working together. So I think there'll, there'll be stuff happening. So um, on that note, maybe, um, Jimmy, so do you want to get on stage? And then Tarun, do you want to give, give maybe a bit of bigger business context, actually? Okay, oh, Philip Baddy's on stage too. So Tarun, do you, you want to give a bit, bit of a picture of what's, what's going on here? So go ahead, Tarun. Sure. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tarun. I'm the uh, president of Algo Dynamics North America. I uh, oversee and manage our, our North American business. Um, I thought I'll give you just sort of a brief uh, yeah. overview of the different businesses that we have here at Algo Dynamics. We have a traditional software business where we provide price forecasting for the financial markets, the crypto markets, the equities markets, and the commodities markets. Uh, we sell our uh, software to high net worth individuals, tech entrepreneurs, uh, small and medium sized uh, family offices and hedge funds. Uh, we offer a three month a trial if you want to try out our software. Um, the cost is 3000 US and we provide you with analytics for um, 20 stock symbols if you're trading equities and uh, 10 cryptocurrencies if you're trading crypto. Um, and then we also have a fund partnership yeah. business where we uh, co-launch new hedge funds, uh, equities funds, commodities funds, and crypto funds. Um, so if you'd like to find out more about either our software business or fund partnership business, uh, don't hesitate to sort of reach out to either Jeremy or myself. Um, you can reach Jeremy at uh, jeremy at algodynamics.com, or you can reach me at uh, charun at algodynamics.com. Thank you. Thank you, Tarun. And I think just, just emphasizing, you know, where, where are we going, you know, including with people like yourselves, um, Ernie, it's just, you know, sort of combining different softwares, combining different technologies. Um, I think that's on that one. Um, on that note, and then last one, actually, before I hand over to Jimmy, um, Ernie, you made some very good points there. So I just want to sort of, you know, address those. Very, very, very interesting, by the way. And you've, you, you've, it feels like you've summarized humanity. You, you've summarized financial humanity in, in, in about 20 minutes. So thank you. Thank you for that, Ernie. So um, <laughs> the, the bit about Tarun, about the price forecasting, um we're using order flow so a bit of a technicality a um, bit of context you know we, we, we're not data mining the world we're not trying to boil the, boil the ocean we're not doing sentiment it, it's it's a real-time order flow uh and that's, that's how we're getting our, our price forecast so you know there is there's robustness in the methodology uh you know making sure we don't overfit so i think just giving a bit of context and i think as tarun said he, he will be sort of give more than happy to have on a, a jump on a call and a demo so right good now Proof in the pudding, as they say. Um, so, Jimmy, thank you, thank you very much for joining us too. Actually, so, Jimmy, do you, do you want to unmute yourself and, and give a bit of context? Because I, I think I always like these shows. So, Jimmy, Jimmy, go ahead. Um, yeah, like, hello, yeah. Uh, I'm here to take over a moment, like your time today, to talk about like something that has been cooking over at Jacobian Capital. Yeah. Which is something that brand new we're working on right now. And yeah, we're on a bit of exciting journey, like harnessing the power of the agrodynamics, like to reshape the investment landscape. So like our team is uh, based in Hong Kong and we have put together a couple of standout investment products. Like first up is our uh, CP1 long short equity crypto balance fund. And this one, like the steadier ship targeting those who aren't looking to rock the boat too much with risk. Like, and then like those who are about to maximizing their potential returns and can handle a bit of roller coaster. Uh, there is also like a typical fund targeting for the high uh, high returns, and it's about like reaching a bit higher and chasing um, those lo- uh, larger gains. So like now like what's cool about this is the way that um, 
you get to stay in the driver, uh, driver seat. And we're rolling with IB and OKX for managing account structure. So you got the reins when it comes to your investments. And just a heads up, like uh, these opportunities are tuned for professional like accredited investors. And of course, like, uh, depending on like where you are, may or may not be like available because uh, we play it by the uh, book of regulations. So yeah, like if this got you curious and you know, you need to get into like these weeds of it all, like I'll be more happy than to, you know, dive into deeper with you. And uh, like, yeah, like maybe there's gonna be time to figure out more uh, whatever that suits for you. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Jimmy. So, so there we go. So it's AI in practice, and then so it's it's earlier days still. But it was keen to get you on on the call, Jimmy. Thank you, and yes, we, we will be combining it with the, with some of the CPO stuff from uh, from early. So that's the plan. So, thank you very much for that. Actually, so okay, this is end of part one now. I'm I'm, I'm going to stop recording, and I thank everybody for listening now. So.